Okay, time for our next film. Our second film in reverse order was Hotel Artem, and in correct order, because there were three films. A little bit. Ooh, no. Oh, no. i trying to get, get myself more in light here. Okay, yeah, Hotel Artemis. Hotel Artemis. We didn't know anything. No, nothing. When we went in. Nothing. We didn't I even know I, he was in the movie. <laughs> and I it remember, turned out to be all these people yeah, we knew. <laughs> I remember reading about Jodie Foster being in it, but I had totally wiped that out of my mind when I went in. What an interesting movie. I... Okay, so previously we saw Deadpool. Two. Two. Deadpool 2. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed Deadpool. Yeah, I... I enjoy... Okay, not to say that it's a better film necessarily, but I enjoyed the experience of watching it more than I enjoyed the experience yeah, of watching Deadpool. I agree, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I, 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 can't, I can't say that, actually. No, just kidding. I can't agree. Yeah? Like, okay. Deadpool 2 had more grading moments... And that's a preview I mean, of Deadpool 2. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a big stick with Marvel. Marvel, So most Marvel experiences, I just don't really buy into. So this, you like... Can't, you can't use that to excuse everything. No, no, I don't... I'm well, sure I mean, you have specific criticisms. Because this... Because, okay, let's not get into Deadpool 2. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Dead, yeah, 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 yeah. Deadpool 2 is a different later. thing, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, but um, I have... We have to go into spoilers before I can just totally tear this tear this movie a new one. Yeah, this, this is just... Okay, we went in going in knowing that this was going to be kind of a bad film. Mm-hmm. It is a bad film. I think we can agree. Okay, what's your star rating, Mark? I don't know. Really? I, I have mean, a star rating. I it en- might surprise you. I enjoyed the experience yeah. knowing I was bad. There were so many bad moments. But I just It was sort of like our thing with like Girls Trip or something. Oh, but Girls Trip was where, good until the end. Well, Girls Trip, yeah. Yeah, Girls Trip it just like got melodramatic. But yeah. something like, I don't know. <sighs> Okay, I'll go. Okay, yeah, what's your three star? Three stars. Three stars? Three stars. Mine get, is like three or... It gets an ironic pass. Like, yeah, it's... And you can tell the director try. Oh, man, the yeah. director tries. And yeah. he's the writer of the script, too. And most of my criticism with the film is the script. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Can you see how immediately when we I start talking about Hotel Artemis, I get more excited? Because with Hereditary, I'm just like... What? Yeah. <laughs> now I'm just like, yeah, let's go. I know what I think about this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hereditary, it's much easier to have an opinion. Like, there are things in the script really? that I, don't... I have a very clear opinion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like, with with this film, like, it's so easy to pick apart the script. Because this is not a very good script. Like, things happen in this film. And they're just like, okay. Especially near the end. Like, like the decisions that characters make just don't really makes sense. Uh, I think the decisions that characters make... It's like what the writer wants instead of the characters want. I, I, that's the impression that's I get. That's one way to think about it, but I think what would make this what really make this film work I was thinking the entire time what if this film were a TV miniseries where they could flesh out more characters? Yeah. And because huh. I really enjoyed the first, uh, let's say, 30 minutes of the film. I'm not going to go too deep into spoilers. But this is clearly... Oh, should I just go for it? No, I'm not going to go for no, it. No, no, don't do spoilers yet. No, I'm not going to go for but, yeah. but... See, the movie is called Hotel Artemis. And for the beginning, it felt like the hotel was a character. It felt like there was this underground thing that everyone knew about. It felt like... Yeah, It felt point. like there was this... You know, it was just a secret place. With we should, we should also explain the setup as well. I guess. Yeah. Let's, or should we? Uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to know what they sort of intend for you to go in with this. Uh huh. Oh, by the way, um, so, uh, by the, so we saw three films about, we saw three films today, and all of them are about family, <laughs> in some way. That's where true. Family is a prominent theme. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And it was during, uh, it was during Hotel Artemis where I'm like. Wow, this, these all three films are about family. Because I knew <laughs> kind of what the third film, what Hereditary was going to be about. Hmm. So that was just a funny observation. That's interesting. Yeah. Huh. I think you should go. Okay. Mostly. Because I okay, need so, to wait until spoilers for this. Okay, yeah. Ha- <sighs> Hotel Artemis. Okay. Um, what's her name? Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster is by far the best thing in this film. I think all the actors are fine. I think all the actors try so hard. All the actors try, but I was enchanted by her performance. Oh, I, I just thought she did great. I agree. Yeah, it's a, so despite, good to see her. Despite the weird script. Despite her character Des- just uh, yeah, being she, so... She spun it really well. She that did was just really enjoyable well. to watch. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I like Dave Bautista, too, the um, Everest. Who was he? Everest. Everest. Oh, yes. He was also very cool. Yeah. yeah. He was very much a, a, a role written for him. Yeah. Knowing that he plays yes. Drax. Yeah. By the way, if we're talking Dave Bautista, he, he was a wrestler. Oh, really? And talk about, like, making better career choices than Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> Dwayne The Rock yeah. Johnson plays every single yes. film wearing the same gr- beige, green, cardigan, gray shirt. <laughs> Like, we saw a trailer for Skyscraper. He's the same person. Yeah. You know? And his best performance I've seen recently was in Jumanji. He's still the same person. <laughs> and, um... Well, he's he's probably just not as strong as an actor. Mm. Like, like, he... This... What's his name? Obviously has acting chops. Dave Bautista? Dave Bautista. Oh, yeah. 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 He was in Blade Runner 2049. Oh, really? Yeah, he has a... Uh, mm. he, he was there for a very brief time at the beginning as a side character. Mm. And it really works. Mm. Yeah, so props to you, Dave Bautista. <laughs> You're making a career, acting career, like an actual acting career, <laughs> out of your out of your wrestling. Yeah. Well, so. wrestling is theater, so I guess it makes sense that it crosses over. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. But I think Dwayne the Rock, Rock Johnson's act style of acting is more wrestling theatrics. Yeah. Than Dave Bautista's. Yeah. Like he does some. He has some moments. In yeah, this like the Rock, like... like his his brand is very much tough guy. Tough guy. Where yeah, Dave Bautista's is very much more like I am an actor guy. Right. It seems like. Right. Yeah, even though he's typecast in more like things that suit who he is as like a physical like oh, wrestler kind of character. Absolutely. But his his acting roles like it's especially in this film, which is not the most sophisticated thing ever. Like it's not like a du- he's not like just a dumb bodyguard. He's mm. someone with a lot of like. Somewhat has depth. Right. Well, I think yeah. his big breakthrough was the first Guardians of the Galaxy yes, movie. And I, I, you know, I'm still on my Marvel binge, sort of. I took a big break because of this channel. But well, well, you'll see. You'll you'll see. But um, <laughs> I saw the first Guardians. I wasn't too wowed by it. I saw the second Guardians, and you can see his performance just go. Pow. Oh, nice. Okay. He's so much better in the second one. Mm. His jokes were better. He plus the writers. He's just a yeah. better character. No, but his delivery of it. Oh, it's in the delivery. I see. I see. I think it's yeah. It might be the writers giving him more to do as well. Mm. But he knocks most of his jokes out of the park. They're like he's so funny. Mm. Yeah, can't wait to see Infinity Wars finally, because he's in it. Anyway, yeah. Okay. I thought most of the acting was great. Okay, we should go to spoilers soon. Oh, already? Well, I mean, it's been a while. <laughs> Has it been a while? I don't know. It's been what? Is there anything? Um, yeah, three stars. Uh, Pro- uh, probably three. If, three if you have stars nothing well. to do, or you're renting it, like you rent it after it comes out, or um, is this a good date movie? No. <laughs> no, it's not a good date. movie. I don't movie. know why I classify some films as just like this is a date movie. No, it's too long. First of all, oh it's yeah, too good overstuffed. Point. Yes, good okay. Point. Basically, this film is overstuffed. If you're enchanted yeah. by this film at the beginning, don't bank on keep, keep <laughs> continuing feeling that way. And yeah, I'll this, get to, this, yeah. This, yeah, this film is yeah is it's a little bit like in the oven for a bit too long and it gets like kind of like just like raw. Yeah, this and, is why like oh. and crunchy. <laughs> and the, we are constantly told new things about each character, and you know this is one of those films where like, okay, let's go into spoilers. Yeah, okay, we should go into spoilers. Go spoilers. Okay, yeah, cuz we we kind of have to at this point. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to bring up I'm going to I'm not going to bring up that one thing I was going to tell you about okay. that like made me completely understand why this movie was made. Oh, okay. I'm not going to bring that up yet. Okay. Cuz I want to continue talking about like how I feel like this movie could have been better if it were fleshed out, uh-huh. maybe if given like an episodic thing, mm-hmm. you know, because this film it tries to do so much. It, you start off with the two gangster brothers. Mm-hmm. You know, they rob the bank. The spoilers, they, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Spoiler yeah. section. Yeah. They rob the bank. They go in the hotel. Um, they meet Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster is yeah. very intriguing. This hotel has a lot of code and stuff. And then um, you see other criminal underground people. You see Sophia Botella, uh, the, the hot chick. You see... Well, Wolfgang later on. <laughs> or no, Wolf, whatever his name it's was. It's not revealed who he is. Yeah. And then it reveals and then who, he who he is. is. And I'm telling you, that reveal was the best moment. 
of his character, and then it's all downhill from there. Yeah. <laughs> he's so underutilized. Okay, it's Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, I mean, he, you, yeah, he's like on screen for like 10 minutes. He shows and then up, he dies. and it's just the most <laughs> joyous thing. Yeah, it's like this fucking guy this fucking guy's here <laughs> and you know he has some good dialogue moments he but does. it's not like Wes Anderson writing him like he has a moment where he's just mumbling in a hospital bed because he's like knocked out and like you know that was kind of funny but I wish see I wish there was just a juicy moment where they're just having a conversation like in the Grand Budapest Hotel where he just reads freaking script where he just reads like laws yeah and it's the greatest thing <laughs> yeah we need more moments like that but when I'm like if this were uh, no 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 and then you get Jodie Foster's backstory where oh, you yeah. like try he, she ca- keeps having the same flashback of like the the son and then there's this cop chick who like gets brought in and she has to break her own rules see that's the thing that's exactly why this hotel thing crumbles uh, lack of a better word um, she breaks her rules too easily like, the writer tries to write moral dilemmas, but because we don't know anything about anybody and they're not developed enough, we don't care if yeah, she breaks the rules. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. And the last rule they break was killing, right? Yeah. Like, the killing. And Jodie Foster comes in, like, oh, did you kill somebody? Whatever, fuck it, let's move on. Like, it wasn't even addressed. <laughs> it was nothing. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, when they're escaping, they, like, all of a sudden become badasses and start, like... It's like throwing like Jodie Foster sticks a scalpel in the guy's like neck or like mm-hmm. no like the, give some pa- elephant painkillers or something elephant at the pain end. Kill- I mean I mean yeah. you know <laughs> it, it felt right that the moment is going to end with some sort of action because it's right. been building up all this dramatic shit for so yeah, long yeah but like <laughs> um, okay, one thing I really don't like about this movie is, like, when you expect a character it, it, it already died via gunshot, and they don't reveal him, you know, a way to build tension and a way that, like, treats the audience correctly would be to see him slowly climb up or slowly get up. But no, every time we get someone jumping, just, like, at the point of, like, <laughs> you know, at the point where, like, oh, my God, Jodie Foster's going to die. Nope. um, Black actor, I forgot his name, just jumps. It's like, nope, I'm not dead, motherfucker. Okay, that, <laughs> yep. was, that was a little insensitive. There were so many but, moments but, like but, that where it's, like, mm-hmm. that someone comes out of nowhere mm-hmm. and saves, like, saves them or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. can't say yeah. Oh, there's, all, there's also, like, a lot of, like, like, trying to, like, have criminals who are actually good people sort of thing by, like, having the criminals sacrifice themselves by being badasses. Yeah. Like, that happens with, oh, like, right. every single character. Right. Like, they try to sacrifice like themselves. Like, they try to sacrifice themselves. But then what really gets me is that at the end, she just decides to go back. <laughs> But she doesn't go back to the hotel. No, she does. No, 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 no. That was not what's implied. Uh, she, like, goes back and, like... No, she be- she goes and helps the wounded in the riot. No, that's what it was. Because she sees oh. she sees Dave Bautista turn, okay. the, turn the light on, and she's like, yeah, man, you do, you do him proud. And then she just walks into the war zone. Okay, I see. I thought she was going to fucking commit suicide. Oh my god. I was like, wow, she's just going to end it. Because, like... Well, that seemed to be what she was implying. Because she was out after curfew. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's, it was almost like... Yeah, she even said at one point, I'm an old Hold woman. On, I'm looking up one actor's name. I'm not I'm not okay. just texting. Anytime okay. I'm on my phone during these videos, it's not texting. Just, just yeah. FYI. Yeah, he, he's looking something up, probably. Yeah. Um, it's... Ugh, oh, my god. Yeah, I mean, okay, what's that guy's name? I want to know. Charlie Day. Okay, I felt like this was conceived, as you, like you said, now that you, now I think, now you mention it, uh-huh. it, it feels like this is a, something that wants to be a miniseries. Exactly. Yeah, like, they flesh out the world, they have, like, an episode where they save the cop, they have an episode where they focus on each of these characters, mm-hmm. and then as a finale, they have... Maybe a chunk of three episodes where it's, yeah, about, three episodes. Where it's about the event yeah. on this one night. Because, like, yeah. I like the idea that, like, shit goes down this one night. Yeah. But you got to build... And then it's the, not established. Yeah, and the there's riots no going on in the city was not established. Yeah, there's Just no... This thing. We have no idea why there's riots. It's, mm-hmm. like, assume Like, it's... It's ten years in the future, right? So Mm -hmm. it's almost like it wants you to assume why there are riots. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, of course, shit's fucked up. 
Yeah. Like, of course, like, ev- like Los Angeles. 2028. Of course, Los Angeles is in flames. You just have to take our word for right, it. Right, exactly. Like, I feel like there's this backstory that we're just not getting yeah. because, like, the writer, like, planned it all out and, like, gave us one part of the a part of it. <laughs> right. Right. Like, show us events before this night, like, of how the hotel works. Yeah. So that when she breaks the rules, it's much more... Yeah, so it's, it's much, much more, more meaningful and impactful. Yeah. And then maybe dedicate one episode to her flashback so we see who the son was and who this cop was for her, be- to her. Mm-hmm. Because, like... There was there were these moments when like the cop and her were just interacting and they make certain choices and then I'm just like okay I see you have a connection but I don't care enough about you guys to like buy into your connection like you yeah. just do your thing mm-hmm. you know it's it's not investing and I actually got a little bored I wasn't as thrilled by the entire thing as you hmm. there was a part before Sophia Botel started throwing knives that just bored me it was boring for a little bit not not like crazy but it was the letdown after the initial, oh, I like the idea of this hotel amidst all this chaos. Hmm. You know what's the only film that I can think of right now that like introduces an external thing like a riot or a war and just leaves it mysterious and works? This is not a big spoiler. It might be a little bit. Synecdoche, New York. Oh. What war is in that film? It's never, it's never explained. What, wait, is there a war in that? Uh, you, I uh, man, I feel like the circumstances you watched the film that night. I was kind of tired. Yeah, it wasn't. So the I must best. not have gotten it. Oh man, there was. Is this... there a house on fire? There's a house on fire in it, but we're not going to. That's go not into part spoilers. of the war. That's not there... part of the war. No, the war is something that happens outside of the main thing. Oh, okay. And it's not revealed why it's there until the end, and even at the end. That's one of those things where you literally... Okay, I'm not going to talk about Synecdoche for too long. But that's literally what this film tries to do. Except Charlie Kaufman's just a genius in making it work. Right. It it, it does a thing where, like... Oh, we're just going to let you assume that there's this thing going on. Which is what this film, you know, tries and fails. But Charlie Kaufman just does it. He just does it perfectly. Well, it's just that, like... It's not... They almost, like, try to start off by explaining it to you. And right. it's like, the, okay, we don't have time to talk about it that much. Let's start going into the into the hospital mm-hmm. now. Um, or the hotel, rather. Mm-hmm. And it's because they start with, like, news scenes. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember from that very first shot, both of us just, like... Nope. No, oh, yeah, that yeah, was a is... very. Cause, you know what it reminded me? There was a <laughs> there was a Christian film I saw because back then when I actually used my movie pass, I would try to catch something every day depending on what my schedule. I saw a Christian film last year called Let There Be Light. Oh, you told me about yeah, this. Yeah, <laughs> and this film is ridiculous. It's trash. It's just the worst. And it's not. I, I you know, I'm I'm like a spiritual guy, and I, I'm agnostic. And if there's a good motivational film that's about God, you know, I could get into it. But Let There Be Light begins with footage of 9-11. Oh, no. (laughs) That's just... And it's not... There's no reason. (laughs) And Hotel Artemis... We're not... I'm not trying to compare the two because they're very different. Hotel Artemis, actually... Not at all. But but the moment I see news footage, that's the first thing I thought of. I'm like, God (laughs) damn it. Let There Be Light. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's almost lazy setting because if you show news footage, like you're showing like the state of the world, maybe, mm. but you're not showing where we are. You're not showing like what. There, there's right. a lot of information we don't understand of like where we are. Like, it's more just you know, imagery. You compare yeah, it's like, this it's with like imagery. Yeah, you compare this with the news footage in Arrival. Where oh, every single yeah. news... Every you know, single news thing is very pointed, yeah. Yeah, it's very pointed. It reveals... It's the whole political aspect of Arrival comes mm-hmm. from the news footage. Yeah. In, in Arrival, it even feels simplistic. That's because, like, the rest of the film, in comparison, is, like, is much more sophisticated. Yeah. Um, even though it's kind of stripped, stripped from its sophistication, yeah. from its source material. Right. But, um... Yeah, here it's just like, L.A. is crazy, and w- w- you have to take our word for it. Sorry. Right, it's 2028. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, um... Yeah, dedicate an episode to her flashback. And then... I don't know. Dedicate one episode to, like, the two brothers. Okay, yeah. 
So Charlie Day is in this movie, and he's basically dollar store Joe Pantoliano. And I, I don't know who... He, so Joe Pantoliano, who was this 90s film, like he was on a lot of 90s films, and he's always that guy who gives the quips. He's always like, yeah, you, you know exactly which character I'm talking about. Yes. I'm like, he even looks a bit like Joe Pantoliano in this movie. And I'm just like, wait, is that him? No. No, that's not him. He's doing a good impression of him. That's not him. <laughs> yeah, there's that guy. And oh my god, you know that speaking of, you know, like when we were talking about um all the fake deaths, the worst fake death was when it seemed like Sofia Botella, the hot chick, freaking freaking like nailed him on the bar and like killed him. At the very end where all the events are colliding and building up, he suddenly gets up and he's like, "Oh, no! I must get out of here." And he suddenly gets up again just because the the script isn't cluttered enough at that point. You know, you know, man, <laughs> this this fucking movie. Yeah, and of course, you know, there's the whole thing with like, oh, brother, like the, the thing at the end where he's like, "Wow, I feel free for the very first time." That's a very cool moral dilemma. It's like, wow, my brother's dead, but I'm kind of happy that he's dead because I can finally live my own life. Well, he had also decided at that point to stop doing crime. Oh right. Yeah. But see, that's such a good idea. But it's not explored nearly enough because of Hotel Artemis. <laughs> 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 yeah. <sighs> yeah, Hotel Artemis is... It's it's like an unevenly cooked, but mostly undercooked, like, turkey. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's a, it's a whole concept of a show that's just, like, not cooked. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's time, Mark. Yeah. I'm reveal something about this movie. Okay, yeah. Okay, so... There's one film that this film directly drew inspiration from. Yeah. Like, it's basically a copy of it. Yeah. And for those of you who have been catching up with films and are a fan of action in the last past few years... Wait, it's not the film that I know about, is it? Which film? It's not something I know about. I don't think so. Okay, never And mind. funny enough, it's a film that was mentioned in Deadpool 2. Really? Yeah. What is it? John Wick. Oh! Okay. Here, Interesting. You rem you remember why I say I keep on telling you there was a point where I kept on telling you to watch John Wick. Yeah. I'm like John Wick is amazing. It's not just a normal action film. You know what that film does well? What? There's a hotel in that movie. My God! No, 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 no! I finished that movie. I'm like, they're probably not going to make a sequel. But damn, that hotel is phenomenal. Huh. It's just this world. They have their own code. People have weird connections that you don't see. It doesn't reveal everything. And if rules are broken, you immediately see the consequences. Is this something you heard about or something you just understand to be true from seeing it? Well, okay. The fact that they cast the same actress from John Wick 1 to be the hot chick in this one, that confirms it. Oh, yeah. 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 It's the same actress. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's... No. Also, one of the rules in the hotel is to not kill in John Wick. Mm, okay. Yeah. And... This is a little bit of a spoiler, but I won't give you any context. They, they did, they're planning to make a trilogy, you know, and there are two films in. It doesn't take until into this, way into the second film, where that rule is finally broken, and you see immediately the panic it causes everybody. Hmm. And so, like, you compare something like John Wick, in which the hotel, by far, is the most interesting character in the movie. Hmm. You know, you have all these... You know, it's basically Keanu Reeves being regular Keanu Reeves, like, kind of giving stilted dialogue, but sh really great action scenes. Shooting down dummies, basically. But you have freaking this hotel that is the main character of the film. And then you have Hotel Artemis. <laughs> that's a wannabe John Wick. Yeah, that's that totally makes sense, and I haven't even seen John Wick. Yeah. Yep, there it is. That's, uh, that's the last thing I want to say. It's like someone, uh, yeah. It, no, it didn't, I was like, okay, this is probably inspired by John Wick. And then, like, he breaks the rule of killing at the end. I'm like, this is John Wick. <laughs> but shit. <laughs> yep. That's all I had to say about it. Okay. That's the last, that's the last that makes a lot surprise. That the makes last a lot surprise. Of sense. Yep. <sighs> so, Mark, want to watch John Wick? Oh, I have another thing. Yeah. Dumbo. Oh my god, I forgot! <laughs> I was gonna talk about it! I had it in my head! 
Oh, I forgot to talk about it. All right. So, this fucking score. So it's by Cliff Martinez, who did the score for Drive, who did the score for The Foreigner, and I love his scores. This film did not have a good score. No. And uh, partially it is the score's fault in itself, but partially... Partially? They use this motif in the movie. That sounds like the Flintstones theme. It sounds theme. like the Flintstones theme. <laughs> Like, and if you know what Project Mark's a part of, you know why the Flintstones theme is so significant. Yes. <laughs> and even for me, because I'm a big fan of this project that he's in. Oh my god. And boy, do they know when to pick the best moments to use that theme. <laughs> they do. It came in at every moment. They, like, wanted you to feel something. Yeah. They would just... Like, this is the laziest use of motivic writing. Yeah. Because it's not like, oh, there's all these different motifs. It's like, no... It's just one note. Don, Don. <laughs> that they use. Don, Don, Throughout Don, the whole movie. Don. And they use it like the same way each time. No, they don't use it the same way. They, they, well, they, sometimes they change no, the you notes. Can tell he's being clever. Like, they oh, I'm change, change the notes, the notes like, like, You could tell like, yeah. oh, that, it's, it's like if you were like to study it, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's probably like, oh, this is an inversion. Yeah. Like, that's, that's probably what he's doing, right? He, like, yeah. he, 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 he has the motif and the next time it comes up, it's a little different. Next time it comes up, it's a little bit different. But that's it. Mm-hmm. But the, the very first time, it, like it happened, oh we were like Don Don, and I, you didn't draw the connection. I was the one who was like, "This sounds like the Flynn's like Don 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 Don," and then went Don 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 Don. It's in a different. We're key. just like, like we just like. <laughs> it's like our predictions came. Our prediction came true immediately, yep. and it just made the rest of the score yep. like the funniest thing so ever. Good. So good. Because, <laughs> like, it became so apparent every time it kept coming back. Yeah, if you hear it the fifth on, Don, you know it's going to come up. You know it. <laughs> yeah. And that just reminded me. Something else that this film did, it, it took inspiration from one other film for for some certain specific moments, and that's Inception. Do you remember what Inception does? Oh, yeah, hotel. Inception it, has a hotel thing. It's not that. It's, not? it's when it comes to Leonardo DiCaprio's children. They do a thing where you keep on seeing the back of their heads until the very end when they finally turn around and embrace daddy. Whenever Jodie Foster is is like, oh, yeah, is like thinking about her, her son, not only is it on a beach, which reminds me of Inception, but the son, you always see the back of his head. You always follow the back of his head. Yeah. So the very last flashback where he just turns around and is like, oh, that's a cute child. But I already seen I it. I didn't even register. Really? That. I did not. Oh, it's so that. it's so painfully obvious. Like like it's not. I'm not. You know, trying to fault uh-huh. you for not. No, not it's at just, all. It's yeah. just. It's just so dumb. <laughs> it's just so dumb. <laughs> well, something it could have done that made it more interesting. And if you want to copy Inception more, do a thing where like. Okay, you want to stick to the back of his head. Why not see the back of his head like running in the hotel alley? Like, instead of just cutting to the beach every time... Yeah, like, do something that's, like, a Millennium Actress. In a Millennium Actress. Yeah. But Inception does it as well. Oh, really? Yeah, when Leonardo DiCaprio starts, you know, when his dream becomes more unstable, he sees Mal, the wife, he sees his children and, like, a train all in the wrong setting. And yeah, that's, this that's, film is just not that daring to try not. something like that. It's not yeah. that daring and... Yeah. Yeah. Like, it just wouldn't make sense because of how the writer has like confined himself it feels like right right or director or what, whatever you want to call it writer director yeah right yeah. whatever you want to call the maker of this film hey oh is that a diss on the film? no no no, no. Oh, like, like oh, i don't it's know it's not a real film not I, it's the like director. well films are such collaborative projects <laughs> that in many cases i mean well no it's the, it's hard the, to know like the same guy wrote and directed this movie right of, yeah well like he wrote it, but like, who's to say like he went off and then came off with came with a script or if like it was a collaborative? Because sometimes screen screen uh, screenplays are uh-huh. like a collaborative effort from many many people. Uh huh. So it's yeah. hard to say like, oh, it's so and so script sometimes. Right, right. Okay. There were a lot of old people in the audience. Yeah, we we almost thought we were going to see uh, Grandma's Gone Wild. Well, yeah, Grandma's Gone Wild, <laughs> aka Book Club, starring Jane Fonda and Diane Keaton, but it wasn't that. Yeah. I almost wish we'd gone to see that, but, um, I got, I was, it was fine. At the I, end of the day, Hotel Hermes was fine. It was, for the order, for the films that we saw, I rather enjoyed it being number two. In our, yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Okay. That's good talk. Yeah, that was a good talk. 
for Hotel Artemis. Hotel Artemis. I don't know Artemis. if it deserved this much talking, but hey, this is what we do. <laughs> I feel like it's always the the mediocre movies that get the most talk out of us. Like, Jamaican Run was a mediocre 50s film, Yeah, but it was terrible. Well, it, it gives us a lot to talk about of why it didn't... Like, there are films that are just trash, like, uh-huh. like Cat in the Hat, right? Yeah. That are just like, yeah, this is... For sure, like there are funny things about it, but yeah, like this, 90, it's undeniable. This is well, ninety-five percent of the the decisions they make yeah. are wrong, right? So you can't possibly talk about all of it. Like, there's and, nothing and you're to repeat yourself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this film like just it does a lot of things really. That's really cool, mm-hmm. but it's like just a step above garbage. <laughs> It's a couple it, of steps above garbage. It's a couple garbage. of steps above garbage. Like, it's not... It's, like, it has some good shots. It has some okay cinematography. Yeah. Um, the score, while it's laughable, it's, it's like... Okay, the score's pretty bad. I'll give it that. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> but, uh... Like, the coloring's nice. Like, you know, like the actual film itself. Like, it, it, it belongs in a It theater. felt like it did not have a big yeah. budget. Yeah. But yeah. with what they did with the budget, it's no... Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we'll give it that. Yeah. Do you have a star rating to end the video? <laughs> three? Yay! Three star club. Three? Three club. I guess. Maybe two and a half? I don't know. Maybe two and a half. Okay. But I enjoyed this more. Out of the three, like, I enjoyed it the most. It's not interesting. But, like... I don't know. I'll have to think about it. Okay. Three or two and a half. Okay. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. That's it. Enjoy. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Oh man, we have one more film left. We have one more film. Oh, what time is it? Twelve forty.